Hello, Year 4. We've decided that we're going to read you, between myself and Miss Morton, um, a story. And you can click on each chapter and hear a story being read to you. Now, some of you may have already read the story that we've chosen, but the one we're going to be reading is called Cliffhanger, and it is by Jacqueline Wilson. You may well have read it. You may have read other stories by Jacqueline Wilson. Um, but I'm just going to show you on the back, we've got our blurb. Now, our blurb tells a little bit about the story, so it just gives you a bit of a taster of what it's going to be about. And it says, from climbing and abseiling to canoeing in a crazy bucket race, the adventure holiday promises to be full of action. There's just one problem as far as Tim is concerned. He is hopeless at sports of any kind. Can Tim survive the horrors of a week absolutely packed with activity? Can his team, the Tigers, be the overall champions? There are some surprises in store for everyone. Okay, so that's what this story is all about. And you can see from the picture as well, it's obviously going to be some sort of activity holiday um, that these children are going on. So in the very first page, we've got a little picture and it says the boy tigers. And we've learned from the blurb that that's obviously a team that he's going to be on. We've got Tim, which, that's him. He's calling himself me because he's going to write in the first person, Biscuits, that's his friend Biscuits. And we've also got Giles. And this is a postcard and it says, Dear Mum and Dad, I'm at the Adventure Centre. You know that, you took me here. I've only been here half an hour. I'm not enjoying it so far, not one bit, with love from Tim. Okay, so I'm sure when his mum and dad receive that, um, they'll be a little bit worried because they obviously want him to have a good time. But let's find out what actually happens. I knew I'd hate it. I kept telling and telling dad, but he wouldn't listen to me. He never does. I like the sound of this adventure holiday for children, said dad, pointing to the advert in the paper. Abseiling, canoeing, archery, mountain biking. Sounds a bit dangerous to me, said Mum. I didn't say anything. I went on watching telly. How about it, Tim, said Dad. What about an adventure holiday, eh? You can't be serious. Tim's much too young, said Mum. I still didn't say anything. I went on watching telly, but my heart had started thumping under my T-shirt. What does that tell us if his heart has started thumping? That's right, he's feeling a bit scared. He's nine, for goodness sake, said Dad but he's young for his age, said Mum. I still didn't say anything. I went on watching telly. I stared hard at the screen, wishing there was some way I could step inside. Tim, said Dad. I didn't look round quickly enough. Tim, stop watching television, Dad shouted. I jumped. Don't shout at him like that, said Mum. I'm not shouting, Dad shouted. He took a deep breath. He turned his lips up into a big smile. Now, Tim, you'd like to go on an adventure holiday, wouldn't you? He'd hate it, said Mum. Let him answer for himself, said Dad. He had hold of me by the shoulders. I don't really like adventures much, Dad, I said. Dad went on smiling, but I think he wanted to give my shoulders a shake. Well, what do you like, Tim? asked Dad. Watching telly, I said. Dad snorted. And drawing and reading and doing puzzles, said Mum. And he comes topping all his lessons at school, apart from games. You know he's hopeless at sport. Only because he doesn't give it a try, said Dad. I was captain of football and cricket when I was a boy. Dad had tried to teach me football. Dad had tried to teach me cricket. He tried and I had tried, but it hadn't worked. Tim can't help being bad at games, said Mum, pulling me away from Dad. She gave me a cuddle. It's because you've turned him to a right mummy's boy, said Dad. I think an adventure holiday would do him the world of good. He wouldn't listen to Mum. He wouldn't listen to me. He booked the adventure holiday. You'll love it when you get there, said Dad, over and over again. He bought me new jeans and t-shirts and trainers and a stiff soldier jacket to make me look tough. Mum bought me a special safety helmet to wear all the time to keep me safe. I didn't feel tough. I didn't feel safe. I needed to hug Walter Bear very hard when Dad drove us to the adventure centre. Dad said I shouldn't take a teddy bear with me because the other kids would laugh. Mum said I couldn't get to sleep without Walter Bear. And I didn't say anything. I hugged Walter even harder, sniffing in his sweet, dusty smell. Dad looked into his driving mirror and saw what I was doing. Tim, said Dad, turning around to frown at me. Come on, you're doing it deliberately. Put that silly bear down. You'll be sucking your thumb next. He was watching me, not watching the road. An old banger suddenly overtook us, making Dad swerve. Silly people, Dad shouted, peeping his horn. A girl leaned out the open back window of the car and yelled right back. Slow coaches, she shouted and pulled a silly face. I hope that girl's not going on the adventure holiday, said Mum. I hope she wasn't going on the adventure holiday too. I wished I wasn't going on the adventure holiday. Look, Tim, I think that's it, Dad said excitedly. 
I didn't look, I shut my eyes tight. I hoped if I wished hard enough, I'd somehow whiz through space and end up safe at home. But dad was already parking the car. I wonder if any of you have ever felt like that where you're going to do something you really, really don't want to do. Mum kept going on at me, asking why I had my eyes shut and did I feel sick? And I couldn't concentrate hard enough on my wishing. Then dad opened the door, sorry, the car door and yanked me out and hissed at me to stop messing about. He told me to say hello to the lady. Hello, you must be Tim. I'm Sally. I'm in charge of the Adventure Centre, she smiled. She smiled at me and Dad prodded me in the back to make me say hello. The slow coach girl was dashing about, showing off. Now you behave yourself, Kelly, said her mum. But she didn't sound a bit fierce. She sounded friendly. Kelly just laughed at her and gave her a hug. You can clear off now, mum, she said. Bye. I think we should make ourselves scarce too, said Dad. Cheerio, Tim. He bent down and whispered in my ear. Now you're really going to try to be a big boy, OK? I didn't say anything. Dad chucked me, un chucked me under the chin. You'll have a great time, said Dad. But if you really don't like it, then phone and we'll come and get you straight away, said Mum. And write me lots of postcards too, one every day. She gave me a hug and a very wet kiss. I wriggled. I was sure Kelly was watching and laughing at me. Mum, I'll be OK, honestly, I said. Though I didn't feel OK. It was awful seeing them get back in the car without me and I waved like crazy. There was someone on the back seat waving back. Walter Bear, I'd left him in the car. Come on then, Tim, said Sally, putting her arm around my shoulders. Hey, Kelly, wait for us. Kelly had gone charging through the doors and down the hall of the adventure centre. Where's all the other children then, she shouted. When are we going to start the adventures? Can I go canoeing first? No, wait a minute. What's the thing called when you dangle down a cliff? Abseiling, said Sally. I muttered the words dangle and cliff and felt sick. I'm going to love abseiling, said Kelly, and she threw down her bag and started miming it, rushing backwards. She rushed backwards into me, nearly knocking me over. Simmer down, Kelly, said Sally. I'm not very good at simmering, said Kelly, laughing. I generally bubble over. So I see, said Sally, shaking her head. OK, you'd both better get unpacked. Your bedrooms are up the stairs at the end. Girls on the right, boys on the left. You'll see a tiger poster on the door. Kelly and I went up the stairs together. I didn't know what to say to her. I felt silly and shy. She pulled another funny face. What did Sally say? Girls to the left, so you go that way, said Kelly, giving me a little push to the door on the right. I was sure she got it wrong, but Kelly isn't the sort of girl you argue with. So I knocked on the right-hand door and then peeped round. Two girls were staring at me, outraged. No boys allowed in here, said the pretty one, tossing her long hair. Clear off. Yes, clear off you, said her friend. I cleared off rapidly. Kelly was being shouted at too. She didn't seem to care. Uh-oh, swapsy, she said, shrugging che cheerfully. I tried the left-hand door this time. Inside, there were two boys messing about with their bags. Hello, I'm Giles, said the taller one, whose voice was very posh and acted very pushy. You're going to be in our team, the Tigers. What are you good at then? I thought hard. Uh, well, I'm OK at maths and... Games, you Wally, said Giles, sneering. What school teams are you in? I'm not, I said. You're not in anything. Oh, great, said Giles sarcastically. We've got three girls, old fatso here and you. The fat boy was sprawling on his bed eating a biscuit. Less of the fatso piles, he said, munching. I giggled. I know what piles are. My dad had them once. The fat boy giggled too. Hi, I'm Biscuits, he said. What's your name then? Tim, I said, putting my bag down on the bed next to Biscuits. Not that one, that's my bed, said Giles, knocking my bag on the floor. Your bed's that one over there, said Biscuits. We're supposed to be unpacked. They're going to ring a bell when it's tea time. I can't wait, I'm starving. He unwrapped another biscuit and started serious munching again. Giles unzipped a tennis racket and started swinging it in the air wildly. I started unpacking all my stuff, my t-shirts, my pyjamas, smelt all clean and flowery of home. I had to bend over my bag to see that Giles and Biscuits wouldn't see the watery eyes. Then I felt a sudden bang on the head. Watch out, I squeaked. Sorry, just practising, said Giles. Oh, goodness, you're not blubbing, are you? I hardly touched you. I sniffed hard. Have you brought your tennis racket then? Giles asked. I started to worry some more. I thought they were meant to provide all the rackets and that, I said. That's right, said Biscuits. He quietly passed me a tissue. It was a bit chocolatey, but it was still fine for mopping operations. It'll be just ropey old stuff, said Giles scornfully. I've brought my own equipment. He started rifling through his bag, showing us. It all looked brand new and very expensive. I brought my own equipment too, said Biscuits, grinning. He nudged me and pulled open a big picnic bag. I saw bags and bags of biscuits, crisps, apples, sweets and cans of Coke. Yummy, I said. Biscuits rubbed his tummy. Giles sighed in a superior manner. I have brought one bit of equipment, I said, showing him my safety helmet. I knew it was a mistake as soon as I got it out, especially if Mum had painted Tim in bright pink letters on the front. Giles did a deliberate double take. What's that then, he said, though of course he knew. Well, it's a safety helmet, I said. I see, said Giles. When are you going to wear it then? 
when I'm, when my voice tailed away, Giles was serving madly and I had to dodge sharpish. When little boy is playing tennis, Giles jeered, in case he gets banged on that, in case he gets banged on the head, is that it? I pretended to ignore him. I wanted to keep well out of Giles's way, so I went over to the wardrobe, put all my stuff away. Then I hunched up on my bed and wrote my first postcard. Biscuits offered me a bite of his biscuit while I was writing it. The biscuit was a bit slurpy and soggy, but it was still nice of him. I added a PS to my first postcard. But I have got a friend called Biscuits. Okay, so obviously Tim has arrived and not feeling very happy. And there's some not very kind children there, are there? But at least he's met one boy that he can be friends with. And we'll find out about the adventures of Biscuits and Tim in the following chapters. Okay, see you all soon.